Hey guys, Dr. Eric Ball Cabbage. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today I'm continuing my discussion on 12 reasons that you may struggle to get well. And this doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you have thyroid issues, just you know, chronic weight issues, emotional issues, depression, anxiety, whatever your health related issues are. Um, these 12 things that I'm covering are common reasons that I see that people struggle to get well. So number five, we're talking about you're assuming that sometimes that there's one thing that's creating your health issue. So I just had it happen today on a discovery call. Somebody said they got diagnosed with hypothyroidism, with Hashimoto's. They gave up gluten and they thought that they would be better because they gave up gluten. Well, they feel a little bit better, but they don't feel well. And I said that may be part of the issue, but it may not really be your issue or there may be other things that are contributing to what's going on. So too often we don't realize that what's creating our chronic health issues isn't always one thing, but really the accumulation of stress over time. We call this the stress load or the allostatic load, and that's what breaks us down. It's not one big obvious thing, but a lot of small things that maybe we just assume that those that's just the way life is. I can manage it, I can handle it, but it's the accumulation of all those small things that eventually break us down. So. Um, think of stress kind of with this graph, and I've done a couple other videos on this, but here's your baseline of where you're at normally in life with low or no stress on the system. And then here's your stress threshold. This is where your body has sen senses danger. So typically the body operates in one of two modes, something called homeostatic regulation, where the amount of stress on the system is manageable. We can adapt, the body can adapt easily, manage whatever that stress is, doesn't really throw us out into a more uh, stressful concern, right? All the the challenges on the body, and I hate to use the stress, gotta come up with better words for this stuff, but in a, when there's a manual amount of stressors on the system, we operate in what we call homeostatic regulation. When there's an excessive amount of stress on the system, then we shift in what we call allostatic regulation, meaning, hey, I don't have enough energy to deal with everything I've gotta deal with, so I'm gonna slow down or reduce the energy to the things that are less important and put more focus and attention on cell defense. And if you've watched my videos, you know that this is a big reason I believe that people have chronic thyroid issues is, not, is less of, about the immune system waking up one day and saying, hey, I'm just gonna attack the thyroid gland and more about what is the body trying to protect itself from? The body senses danger, the cells, the tissues are sense danger. They're trying to slow down the metabolism, ramp up defense, and reducing thyroid hormone helps with that process. So let's say you go through life and you get some stress, but then that stress goes away, you go right back to baseline. Then you get this massive amount of stress, but given enough rest and recovery, you go back to baseline. But over time, if you get stressed and you don't get back to your baseline, then even small amounts of stress can push you into or over that max threshold where your body's operating from danger mode. And I think that's where so many people are. It's small things that kind of creates this kind of danger physiology for them because they're never fully recovered. They're just contributing, adding more and more and more stress, never getting to full recovery. And so they're always operating from this kind of danger physiology. And then when you do something to help what, what you think should help, it doesn't really work very well. Why? Because the body's still in danger mode. If I'm in, in homeostasis and you give me a meal, I'm probably gonna eat it. But if I've got people that are shooting guns at me or chasing me and wanna beat me up, I'm not gonna stop and have a meal. I don't care how good it tastes, I'm in self-defense mode. And I think how, that's how many of us are operating. So what can you do? You know, one of the best things that we can get our clients to do as, as physicians is have you do a health timeline. And I think this really opens the eyes of people when they actually do it. And that is they go back and go from back from as early as you can remember, what are the health issues you had? What processes, procedures did you have as you went through life? And so you may go back and say, hey, I was born C-section, not vaginally delivered. Is that a big deal? It could be because that bacteria then that starts to support your, colonize your GI tract, support the immune system is probably skin flora, not vaginal flora, which is really the better match. You could, maybe you know, hey, I was bottle fed, not breastfed. Why is that important? Well, your mom, if she's got a healthy immune system, is giving you her immune system is part of that breast milk. But if you didn't get it, 
again, you may not establish a good, healthy butt, gut biome. Then as you go through, hey, I had chronic ear infections and chronic swollen lymph nodes, and I had to get my tonsils and my adenoids out. All of this stuff, you start to see that maybe my problems I have today are the result of problems that were building over years or decades and not necessarily, oh, I just got diagnosed with high blood pressure or high cholesterol or hypothyroidism today. You can see problems with gut physiology, problems with sex hormone physiologies, problems with weight, all these problems developing over time. And it doesn't, it's not always that evident to somebody because they're living it, but when they, that timeline is done, it becomes really evident to us as the physicians that this is something that's been developing over decades, not over the last six months or year. And I think it helps the people that actually do the work to fill that out and they go, oh, man, I thought I was healthy, but now that I read back through this, I've really had some health issues almost my whole life. The other thing to do is look at your life and what we call the fitness factors and take a look and see what things in your, in your physical fitness or your physical health might be contri contributing to the stress on the system. What chemically could be contributing to it? What emotionally, in your sleep, respiration, your environment, your habits, your metabolism, your diet, your finances, what are the things that are contributing to this load that aren't ever getting back the baseline that could be pushing you into this danger physiology? The last thing you can do, or one of the next things you can do, if you want, you can go to my website, rejuvagencenter.com, and there's a fitness factor quiz or questionnaire. You can fill that out and see what kind of response and that we can get, we can have a discussion about that. Like, how did you, re, how did you answer those questions? And then the last thing is, of course, work with a functional medicine practitioner who's considering not one thing when they're helping you, but considering that there's a vast majority of things. I had another discovery call today and the person, we, we'd start talking about what was going on and their doctor said, it's a mold issue, okay? Well, they've been working with that physician for a while I'm like, did you guys consider anything else? What are you doing from your nutrition standpoint? What are you doing from a sleep? Have you guys talked about respiration? Have you guys talked about physical activity? Have you guys talked about the emotional stress? And the only thing they've really done in six to eight months is mold detoxification protocols and they're no better. So maybe it's not the one thing, but maybe it's accumulation of things that are contributing to the problem. So the physician is stuck in a one thing model and I think the physician needs to back up and take a broader look at what's going on probably and say, hey, what else is going on here that may be contributing to this person's immune system being run down and maybe being more susceptible to mold. And maybe that's why they can't get, rid get the person healthy. They're treating somebody who's maybe has some reactivity to mold, but maybe all these other factors are what are wearing them down. All right, so hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, write it below wherever you watch the video and I'll do my best to get, get an answer back to you. And then stay tuned for more of this series, the 12 things that might be causing you to struggle from getting well. All right, take care.